Hello, my name is Gary Simmons and I'm building the Zenith 750 and I've installed the Viking 130 engine onto my airframe. This video is about the installation of the Viking View engine monitoring system. There is nothing in this video that will supersede you following the Viking View instructions uh, for the installation process. Be sure and read this thoroughly before beginning the installation of your engine monitoring system. Before we begin with looking at the Viking View installation process, we're going to be looking at what the kit contains. And so you'll receive your kit in the mail and it'll contain everything that you need to successfully install your instrument monitoring system. The first thing to notice is your instructions. And on the instruction uh, front page is a list of the items that uh, your kit contains. And I just want to go over a few of these items just so that you have a, a sense of what it is that you've received as your Viking installation kit. Um, first of all, you've re you'll receive the Viking display. And this is mounted on your, in your cabin uh, and obviously on, uh, on your panel. And this is an engraved um, faceplate. And so uh, the Viking view gives you the option. You can order the engraved faceplate or you can just use the one that typically comes with it and it's not engraved so you can hopefully see and appreciate the difference between the two the next thing I'd like to point out with respect to the display is on the back of the display is where the connections will be made to this unit between the display itself and the control box the control box will receive all of the sensor wires and it'll be powered up and then there will be a cable that goes from the control box to the display and as you notice in the back of your display there are places for uh, connectors and on on this side there are two connectors four pins each and on the other side there's a, um, a connector for two pins and then another one for five so the, the cable that runs between the display and your control box has four pins and so either of these uh, two four pin connectors will work just fine. So just go ahead and connect up your control box to the display using one of these two connecting points. So that just clears the, the, that part up just a bit. In addition to your control box, which is labeled on the outside, uh, all the connections that you'll be making, um, this will be installed inside your cabin and you'll want to perhaps wait till after you have run all of your sensor wires prior to locating where this is going to be situated so that you ensure that the length that you have left as as you've run from each individual sensor into your cabin is sufficient to be able to make sure it's a convenient mount and you're not having to stretch any wires or or add additional length uh, to the wires themselves Okay, next up is a brief overview of what's inside your Viking installation kit, and this is uh, presented by Jan. The Viking View, of course, shows up with the Viking View display, your sensor box, your sensors for pressure, fuel, and oil, and your temperature probes for coolant and gearbox, your mounting hardware, and all the connectors that go between these things. This shows how easy it is to wire the Viking View. The two pressure sensors plug them into the module. The two temperature sensors plug them into the module. One data cable to your instrument. One cable for power. Okay, step one of the installation process is to find a location for your display. And as you can see, as uh, you see my panel, I've already installed my display right above where my mini iPad will be mounted here. Now, the space that I had already pre-cut out was for the Viking 110 Viking View instrument, but because of the new uh, system, the display is slightly smaller, and so my cutout had to be... Uh, uh, I had to improvise with respect to the placement of my display. And as I see now, I can just as easily put my faceplate back on and it would trim it out very nicely. So it would look, look well with the rest of my panel. 
So find a convenient location for your display. Uh, my whole panel uh, pivots forward. It's hinged at the bottom. And so it makes it easy for me to have access both to the installation of the display as well as behind it as well. The next step in the installation process is powering up your control box, getting your 12 volt battery. That will be wired to the red and white wire in this uh, cable that connects to the control box to your uh, one amp fused uh, power that gets connected to the uh, white and red lead and then your black wire gets connected to a silent ground. Now depending upon when your engine was delivered, if it was after September 2016, it's likely that your silent ground came pre-wired within your wire loom, the engine wire loom that passed through uh, your firewall that had the two connectors that connected up to your ECU. There was, and in addition to those wires, some wires that were labeled, for instance, your tachometer and then your silent ground will also be labeled as well. This will be a green wire with white stripes. And if you have this wire, you'll use it to connect up to the black lead in this connector that connects between your power and your ground to your uh, control box. In, um, in the course of also wiring up your power associated with your control box, you'll be also connecting your pull-up resistor and your, um, your tachometer lead uh, as well. And we'll talk about this. And it's also connected up to the terminal marked tachometer in this particular connection right here on your control box. So in your instructions is a, a schematic of the wiring of your control box. And so once again, we're working with powering up the control box, which means uh, picking up the silent ground as well as the, um, uh, the, the 12 volts that you need. And so you'll want to have a 12 volt source um, come a 1 amp 12 volt source uh, that you'll connect to the red and white wire as well as connecting up to a wire that's going to lead to your pull-up resistor. And that pull-up resistor then is also connected up to the tachometer wire that goes from uh, the wire loom that you received in uh, when you got your engine, that tachometer wire is connected up to one end of the resistor and the other end is connected up to that 12 volt power source, the same 12 volt power source that you have on your white and uh, red wire. And, and then this, uh, the blue uh, wire that came with your kit uh, is then soldered to the end of uh, that wire that's provided to the uh, from your ECU, the tachometer uh, wire that's provided from that wire loom to your pop-up resistor, to that blue wire, and then to the control box. And so be sure and study your schematic and um, uh, verify the, that those are the connections that you have made. Okay, here's a picture of the first sensor that's mounted inside the uh, gearbox which measures the oil temperature of the gearbox and ostensibly the, uh, uh, the oil temperature throughout the entire engine. And as you can see, there's a small black wire tie that secures the sensor leads to itself and then the actual uh, leads and the uh, connector uh, to the wire that goes through the engine and along to the uh, firewall and then into the uh, cabin area, uh, it's all tied down and secured, as you can see. The next sender is uh, located uh, here at the front of the engine, uh, just behind the gearbox. And as you can see, that uh, send sender is mounted there, and then it is secured uh, just a few inches um, to uh, the stern of that particular connection. So the stress is relieved uh, through another hard point um, nearby the sender itself. Now the instructions that are provided with respect to the uh, installation of this particular sender uh, suggest that you can, with an Allen wrench, uh, remove the, the plug. 
and it also gives you uh, another alternative and that is to just go ahead and remove uh, this bolt and then the one underneath over here just go ahead and remove this connector off of the engine itself and it's pretty easy to do this you'll you'll want to perhaps clamp off this heater hose if you have this heater hose uh, so that you minimize the uh, link uh, the leakage of coolant uh, radiator fluid uh, but other than that if you, you just simply pull, pop these two uh, bolts off then it's a pretty easy install from that point on you'll need to use the right stuff uh, to seal that uh, make sure that is sealed and is free of any leaks. But once again, the sender for the coolant temperature is right behind the gearbox. And once again, if you just remove this whole unit, uh, it's much easier than trying to um, get your Allen wrench behind there and get that thing popped off. Here is the sender installed for the oil pressure and as you can see I have used a black, small black wire tie to uh, relieve any stress on the leads that are plugged into the sender itself. So I've just doubled that uh, sensor lead back on top of the uh, plug and just uh, tied it to itself. And now I'll back this out so you can see the location it's at the back of the engine on the pilot side and this is the uh, motor mount here on the uh, pilot side the upper motor mount and so just right below that is is where this uh, center gets uh, installed and so it was a little bit difficult to find just in the drawing itself uh, but uh, I think that you'll be able to easily locate where this center gets installed and um, with, with all of the senders and their leads, you want to make sure you uh, run the cable into um, a plastic wire loom uh, so it uh, minimizes any chafing that might occur. So, so far we have talked about installing the sensors for the, uh, the coolant temperature as well as the gearbox temperature and then the oil pressure uh, sensor it gets installed at the back end of the engine towards the pilot side. And uh, the, the final installation of the pressure sensor for the fuel can be done in a number of different locations. First of all, if you have your fuel pumps um, assembly uh, close to your firewall, well then you should be able to find a place to install um, the fuel pressure sender uh, nearby uh, your control box. If it's like me who installed a header tank the very back end of the uh, behind the uh, baggage compartment um, and underneath the fuselage then the uh, the wire the, the data lead to the sender uh, is not of sufficient length without you having to splice uh, splice the, um, uh, the wire. And so an alternative uh, to installing the sender back where your header tank is and your fuel pump assembly is to splice your fuel line closer to um, where your control box will be on the outside of the firewall in the engine area. And so in order to affect uh, this um, option, you'll need to come up with um, a way to splice into your fuel line and here is a very easy and simple method so you just get um, your your sender um, and then two five sixteenths um, uh, connectors for your uh, for your fuel injected hose as well as a t-joint there and uh, I'll show you where I have placed mine and it's uh, just an easy way to uh, to do it without having to mess with splicing your data wire from your sender if you have if you have your header tank installed behind the baggage compartment of your 750 or your uh, 701 or whatever um, airframe you have, uh, if it requires uh, uh, splicing your data data wire, you might consider this option. 
Okay, as you can see, uh, here is where I've spliced uh, my fuel line. Uh, my fuel line is uh, right here, and uh, there's the sender that I've spliced in uh, to the fuel line, and here's where I've um, stress relieved uh, the leads from the sender, and it takes off into this a quarter inch wire loom. And uh, that's about as easy as it can get. And then all my wires run through the firewall right at this point here. So all the four sender wires are in one of these uh, plastic looms and going through the firewall at this point here and making their way back to the control box. And so here is my location of my control box. I've decided to locate it on the inside of this particular um, of the instrument panel, the, uh, the, the center console here. Uh, when the, uh, the power is turned on on the uh, control box, there's a little LED that indicates that everything is working. So I wanted to have that visible to me, and there's really no interference as I sit in the cabin. And it's very convenient with respect to uh, having access to all the wires. And um, as I mentioned, the location here was very convenient with respect to not only mounting it uh, in place, but also being able to run the wires in a neat fashion to that location. Okay, we're going to uh, finish up the video now by uh, asking Jan to uh, tell us a little bit something about uh, the Viking display and a little bit about the advantages of the Viking view in general. Here's your Viking view running. You got your tachometer up on the upper right. Coolant temperature, oil temperature, oil pressure, and fuel pressure. You've also got a low voltage warning. If the alternator were to fail, the uh, voltage would drop and then you would uh, be getting a voltage warning in the bottom left corner. You're turning the alternator back on right now, you can see the voltage warning goes away and the instrument goes back to the very basic and necessary items required to monitor your engine. Each field will turn yellow if one of the parameters has been exceeded as you saw with the voltage. Thank you for checking out the Viking view. If you need an engine monitor for your home built airplane, this is probably the least complicated one to install. The Viking View is designed to be simple to install, simple to operate. It doesn't do everything to monitor the entire aircraft, but it was never intended to. It does monitor the vital signs of your engine, and it does it for you, and it warns you if any one of those parameters go out of range. The Viking View can be used on the Rotax engine, the Viking engine, or any liquid-cooled engine that's being used in an airplane or a kit car, or anywhere where engine vital signs should be monitored and where the occupant or the pilot is busy doing other things. For more information about the Viking View instrument, check us out at www.vikingaircraftengines.com Okay, that concludes the installation of the Viking View engine monitoring system. I hope this was helpful and uh, happy flying!